Hi folks, today I'm taking a quick look at Cerberus from Apesoft. Not a game that it takes a long time to look at, since it's not a game that it takes a long time to play. To master it's maybe another story, but I'm not too worried about that here. I got myself motivated to do a video on this game when putting together my video for Spotshot recently, as Spotshot's destructible terrain kept bringing me back to Cerberus. Spotshot, for its part, made itself notable by taking fixed shooter design to new heights on the TI-99, which in and of itself wasn't surprising given it came from the makers of Parsec. Cerberus, on the other hand, is notable even just by virtue of what it is and what it's trying to do. It's an 80s era TI-99 vertical scrolling shooter. And those just aren't abundant. That 9918A VDP in the TI-99 doesn't give the designer any help when it comes to making scrolling happen, so it doesn't happen much in the TI-99's original era. We've got Tiger Visions of Spile, but while gameplay is passable there, the fact is, it's a psychedelic nightmare that makes my eyes bleed. And I don't want them to, so I don't think I and a Spile are ever going to be on friendly terms. But thankfully, we've got Cerberus. This is a game produced, as I'd mentioned, by Austrian developer Apesoft, who are also responsible for graphical features of Extended Basic 2+. And the first mention I can find of Cerberus in the English-language TI-99 press is in the September 1988 issue of Micropendium, where Techscomp is advertising it as a fantastic space game from Germany. Which, as far as I can tell, it isn't being from Austria. But they go on to explain somewhat more accurately, you have to pilot your spaceship through narrow and crooked channels in space without colliding. Great graphics, selectable ship speed, and music add up to one of the best we've seen. If you think refueling in Parsec was tough, you haven't seen anything. Well, for one thing, I appreciate their pitying the chronic refueling tunnel victims among us. I'm one of them. But they're also completely right about the game. Awesome graphics, awesome music, awesome game. So, let's listen to some of that music and watch the intro. So the game gets off to a great start with its excellent title music, which plays throughout the Attract mode. And making the Attract mode even better, you can take control of your ship at any time and start playing the level right from within the demo, which is pretty slick. Once inside the level, you can move in two dimensions, which you'll certainly need to to survive, and you'll face enemies approaching from both front and rear. The help screen gives us a bit of a preview of what's in store inside the game, where we're told about the monstrous Batmog, Spiderball, and Snakey, as well as Cerberus itself, and we're told to shout the monsters lest they guzzle us. Which is all just fine with me. I came to this game for Austrian game programming excellence, not for a demonstration of second language mastery in the age before Duolingo. At any rate, Cerberus is waiting in the hell, and we'd better kill him, so the treasure's ours. But before that, we should really decide how hard we want to make this for ourselves. And we can make this experience easy, middling, or insane. Easy is definitely where you want to start, and is what we've looked at so far. But if you want to amp it up a bit, you can certainly move to middle, which looks like this. Here the game moves a bit faster, as you can see, and it's definitely a bit more challenging as a result. Insane difficulty, on the other hand, lives up to its name, as you can see here. 
Beating Cerberus on Insane is genuinely a challenge, but you'll be rewarded with even higher scores. So challenge yourself to insanity by all means. I've definitely enjoyed the challenge myself. So this is Cerberus in all its delightful insanity. Cheers to Apesoft for this terrific game, which brought something special to a sparse TI-99 scrolling shooter market. Thanks as always for watching. If you'd like to see more of my TI-99 game reviews as I produce them going forward, hit subscribe. And if you feel so inclined, tell me about your own favorite TI-99 games below.